Hello. Okay, so I want to try to help you out here and kind of explain some of the basic data path questions, which looks like what you're struggling with. So what I've got in front of me is the single cycle data path for the MIPS machine out of our book. So this is kind of the basis that you're going to use for, well, really everything dealing with data path in the first um, you know, this first part of the lab with single data path and, you know, generally throughout the class. So when we look at this and we want to execute an assembly of instruction, the first thing that's going to happen, you know, we're going to have the PC, which is our program counter that points where in memory our instruction is. Then we're going to be here in the instruction memory and the instruction memory read address is the instruction that we're going to get out of memory. Now in this case, let's say it's something simple like add alright so if it's an add command we know it's gonna have three registers and the add command is an R format command so the first thing that we've got you know when we're we're kinda looking through this is what we need to do is you know get out of the PC and into the instruction memory PC address to there the next thing that instruction comes out and then in the instruction decode phase, what's so that uh, the instruction fetch phase is where we get it out of instruction memory, and then we decode it. Now, since in the example I'm going to go through, we're going to use an add. What happens is that comes out, and that instruction kind of follows these data paths and go in. So the first thing we have is read register one that is the register that the first the first register that needs to be read so if our command is an add dollar, we'll do something very simple dollar sign one dollar sign two dollar sign three hopefully this uh, comes out in the video okay so our command will say is add one two three all right, so if you remember, this is our destination register, our first source, and our second source register. So when we're looking at that read register 1, which is also shortened to RN1, which is what you're seeing in the lab, RN1, that's 2 in this case. Read register 2 is the second one. That's right here, okay, 3. All right. Now, since it's a, an R format, we get the destination out of these bits right here. And that's the right register. That's also abbreviated to WN. <laughs> okay. Now, as you're continuing through the data path, what's going to happen is you're going to actually read the memory from the registers, all right, read the register values, and then that register value is going to, that register value is going to come out of the register file. Okay, so you have the read data one, that's RD1. That's the data that was read for read register one. So in this case, it's the value of register two. Then read data two, this is the value stored in register 3 and that's where you get the RN1, RN2, RD1, RD2. Now as you continue moving through the process, so this is an add, so we know these are going to go into the ALU. ALU source is going to need to select this line, not the sign extend, this is not an I format, so we know ALU source is going to need to be set to zero right here because that has to happen. Now we know that that set is part of the R format command. Then it's going to go into the ALU. This now says that two and three will go into the ALU. Now how does the ALU know what to do? Is it going to subtract them? Is it going to add them? What's it going to do? Well that's where our ALU op is. So the ALU op, we've got a series of op codes. Those op codes get fed into the ALU. We then decide, okay, that's what's going to happen, and then the value comes out. 
Now you see it's fed into here in memory, but we know an add, it's not a store word, it's not a load word, so it doesn't need this memory unit. So when we're into the memory phase, that's fine, we can ignore the memory at this point. Well, what do we do? How do we do that? Well, you can see there's a data path right here. It avoids the memory. Now we've got a mux, which lets us select one or the other. And we can see that the control line mem to reg, it's either gonna have us use this memory data, but we know it's garbage. We, we're not reading or writing from memory. Or it'll be set to zero, which tells us, oh, I'm gonna use this bypass line. Of course, that's exactly what we wanna do. We wanna do the bypass line. And that's going to come all the way back into the register file. Write data. This is your WD. Well, where are we going to write it to? Which register? Well, that's the WN from write register. So what's the register number we're going to write? And then what are we going to write? Write data. And so that's how that path goes through. Simultaneously, while that's going on, we'll know that the PC is going to be added with four, come around, it's going to skip because PC source is going to be zero because this isn't a jump, this isn't another command like that, and it's going to go all the way around. So when we're, we want to just go ahead and draw that out real quick, you know, we know that this is going to come up here, go through the adder, come out, it's going to go here, we're going to ignore that, we're going to follow it up here, PC source will need to be set to zero, so then we come around and boom, now we're ready for the next command. So that's the data flow that we're doing. Now this is for an R format here. It's the same idea when you're looking at an I format, except for you're gonna follow a little bit of a different data path. So you have to look at what the instruction is and what these lines for these muxes are, but that's what you're doing throughout this section is kind of going through, walking through, and then separating these into the actual phases. Is this the you know instruction fetch where we read it out of the instruction memory? Is this the instruction decode where we kind of separate it out? You know, is this the um, you know the execution where we're actually computing the answer in the ALU? Is this the memory phase where we're storing it in memory? Or is this the write back phase? where we follow this around finally to the right data. So that's the general concept. Uh, hopefully this video is helpful.